Greetings viewers, just a follow-up video on the semi-periphery and why you should care. Now I said before, the semi-periphery, uh, this is a group that includes 50% of all human beings on our planet. So this is the demographic majority of our planet. I also mentioned that today there's something new and interesting. The countries of the true core, 13% of the world, now have more in common with the citizens of the semi-periphery, over 50%, than the semi-periphery has with the true periphery. The reason is economics. So if you look at the numbers, the core economies, 13% of the world, they produce $49 trillion of output every year, enormous stockpile of wealth every single year, and have a high standard of living. The semi-periphery, they're 50% of the planet, and they produce $38 trillion of output every year. Now you might think 38 trillion, that's a lot, but that's China, right? Isn't that mostly China? No, it's not just China. In fact, there are many other nations that have been very, very successful over the last 30 years and have grown very quickly. So China is just a part of that. China's share is not disproportionate. That's not all China. It's a bunch of other nations that have grown quickly and expanded as well. And China's share is proportionate as a share of the, their population share. And then finally, there's the economies of the periphery, and they have much smaller economies. So the periphery, that's one third of humanity, but they produce only $5 trillion a year. And that's a huge, huge, huge challenge for them because they have urgent social needs. They need to decarbonize, they need to create jobs and growth, and they have very limited tools and resources. They urgently need to organize themselves to organize uh, more wealth and to create more wealth without destroying the ecosystem and the in the process, and that's an enormous challenge for them. So getting back to the uh, main topic, so the core and the semi-periphery are in the same cultural space. How does that work? Two main features to this. They both have significant economic resources, and that means that they share two fundamental forms of experience. One, obviously, is the consumer culture. So this might be what you might call the Amazoning of the planet that all nations are now connected and have all these digital goods and services. And the, and, but particularly in the semi-periphery and the core, there's a mass consumer culture that exists in all those places. It's still unequal. If you're poor in Brazil, yeah, your experience of that is limited, but you'll know what the brand names are. You'll have a smartphone. You'll want to buy this stuff, and that'll condition your behavior. That's the key change from a generation ago. And there's a mass middle class in China and elsewhere. And so what that means is they have a lot of things in common. There are coffee shops the world over. Uh, there are all these brand names. There's this everyday consumerism, everyday experience of cars, automobiles, traffic, offices, factories. That's the same between the periphery, I'm sorry, the semi-periphery and the core nations. They share that together. And that's very different from the world of the periphery. The people of the periphery, large numbers of people there still live as peasant farmers and so they just cannot, it's very difficult for them to understand or communicate. The communication is very difficult between them and the semi-periphery these days. It's increasingly difficult. Okay, that's one, consumerism. The other major change of common experience, or the, the form of common experience, I'm sorry, not a major change, the form that this takes is actually tourism. We're used to thinking of tourism as, oh, well, that's just something you travel. That's not important, is it? Tourism is hugely important. Tourism is one of those forces of human society we should pay a lot more attention to as researchers, scholars, teachers, ordinary citizens, because in a strange kind of way, tourism is becoming one of the biggest industries on the planet. It's always been big in the core economies. The big change over the last 30 years is that the nations and polities of the semi-periphery have become major participants of the tourist industry. Travel to any Asian airport, you know what I mean. And then just the sheer numbers of tourists, they're from China, they're from Thailand, they're from Vietnam, they're from Indonesia, they're from Japan, they're from Europe, America. They're just the, the massive numbers of people that are visiting other nations crossing borders every single year. I think the, the World Tourism Organization, I think the latest estimate, 1.6, 1.7 billion people cross borders. It's been going up every year. It's extraordinary how fast, every single year. And so we're headed towards a, a phase of, of immense, so just not just crossing of borders, just as importantly is that the nations of the semi-periphery have big tourism industries inside their own countries. So this is the big discovery I had visiting Thailand and South Korea that surprised me. Sure numbers of people 
in Korea and in Thailand who are Thai and Korean and were visiting their own country and doing all the tourist things anyway and then side by side with you know someone else and it was fascinating to watch this because you'd see the interactions you know some local street you'd know, be selling food and someone would say something in in Thai and they'd get some food or whatnot and I would show up and say something in English and they'd say oh yeah sure and very pleasant interactions and whatnot but this kind of multiculturalism that they're sharing in a common experience and that my position as a tourist is actually very similar to the position of a local even though our wealth and our economies are different wealth level might be different but there's something in common there is a commonization of experiences the harmonization of experiences which is very good for the human race because this means less war less violence less xenophobia you can't hate people that are your fellow tourists that's silly that's ludicrous so then we start to laugh at all the stereotypes of foreigners that have led to the terrible wars of the past like no i don't believe that that's not what i saw when i was a tourist they're, they're human beings there and they, they want to consume stuff just like me and have good food and no i don't buy that anymore that's a really important step forward for the human race because we're at the stage where our weapon systems and our carbon dioxide and our energy systems are powerful enough to end all life which means that we have to start being a lot smarter and fair and sharing the wealth that we we are creating